everyone and welcome back. It's Mindy here with you today and today's card is going to be featuring products from Gina K Designs, My Sweet Petunia, and Picket Fence Studios. This is actually part of a blog hop that I will have linked down below so you can head over and check that out when you're done with the video. I'm going to be starting with this butterfly that I had stamped onto some white cardstock with the Gina K Designs Amalgam Ink. And this stamp set comes from the Elegant Aster stamp set. This has a lot of great images on here. It's a very large stamp set. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm just using some Copic, Muller, Copic markers to add some color to my butterfly. I'm using RV14. Then I'll come in with a Y08. And I'm going over that RV14 just a little bit, and it's going to create a little bit, a hint of an orange color. So I'm almost getting a rainbow out of this. So I'm just adding a little bit of that yellow. And then I'll come in with BG45 for all the ends of the wings. And once again, overlapping just a little bit over that yellow. So it's going to blend together really well using the black amalgam ink. This is Copic safe, so I don't have to worry about any of my ink bleeding. And then I'm going to come in one more time and go over those colors just to really brighten those up. Once I have my coloring done, I'm going to take the coordinating die, hold that in place with some thermal web purple tape, and I'll run that through my die cut machine. So then I'll just carefully remove that purple tape, and my butterfly is ready for my card. Now I'm going to do a little bit of stenciling. So this is the Floral Damask Stencil from Picket Fence Studios. I'm laying some layering white cardstock down on the back of it and I'm going to hold that in place with the purple tape. I like holding my cardstock to the stencil because then I can move the stencil or I can move the whole thing around as I'm working. So that's just my preference and the purple tape holds really well. Then I'm going to come in with some soft stone ink from Gina K Designs and I'm going to be using one of the life-changing blender brushes. They co these come in a variety of sizes. I do prefer the larger ones, but you'll see further on in the video where the smaller ones really do come in handy. One of the things I also really love about the brushes is it's such an easy application. The bristles just really move nicely over the stencil and the cardstock. I'm not catching on anything of the stencil. It just glides over that. And this is creating just a really nice soft background. I didn't want to do the whole piece of cardstock. I wanted some to be light on the edges, kind of fading off. So then I'm going to take some ocean mist cardstock and I'm die cutting out the word wishes three times. And then I'm just taking my little pokey tool and I'm going to pop out any of those little extras in the S and up in the swirly parts of it. Now I want to do a little bit of ink blending. So I am taking that negative, I believe you call it, and I'm putting one of those back into it and holding it in place with purple tape. That's just going to help me ink blend because I want to add kind of an ombre look to the bottom of this. I'm using turquoise seed to do a little bit of ink blending just on the bottom part of this word wishes. And this is where it comes in super handy to have that die cut word kind of held back in place where it die cut from. And this is where I discovered that big brush just really wasn't doing it for me. So I am grabbing one of the smaller ones. These do come in a variety pack of sizes. You can buy the larger ones, the smaller ones. The smaller one worked really well for doing this ink blending. I had a lot of control over how high I wanted that ink to go and how dark I wanted it to go. You can see I'm just placing my finger on top of the head of the brush and I can push down a little bit harder if I want the color to be a little bit darker. And then just getting a little bit lighter as I go up that those letters. So it's going to kind of fade off. Once I'm happy with my ink blending, I can carefully remove that purple tape from the back. It's not ripping my cardstock. And I can just remove that die cut word. Pop that right out. And I have this really beautiful ombre look. So now I'm going to start layering my wishes because I wanted them stacked together to create a little bit of dimension for my card. So I'm just going to take some tweezers and I'm using my Gina K Designs Connect Glue to attach those. This is a fine tip applicator and I'm just adding little dots over those letters. I'm not squeezing really hard. I don't need to. 
and then just lining that up. And I'm going to take my tweezers and I kind of pinch my letters together here and there if it didn't line up right, right away. I have a little bit of wiggle room to adjust that. And then I'll go ahead and attach this top one as well. This is the one that I want showing on the front of the card, so this has the ombre ink blending on it. And then once again, just using my tweezers to kind of maneuver that and make sure everything is lined up. Now off screen, I did go ahead and heat and bust the sentiment birthday to go with my wishes sentiment that I had created. And I just heat and bust that in white embossing powder on black cardstock. And I'm just buffing off any of the excess anti-static powder tool. Now this is the cut -a line from Misty. And this is really great if you want to die cut out your sentiment into a thin strip. What I was pointing to is there is a cut in the middle of that ruler. That's where our blade is going to enter to trim this down. So I'm lining up any of those grid lines. It depends on the size you want this to be. And I'm uh, just pushing down with my blade here. And I'm not putting down a lot of pressure. I'm just lightly giving it some pressure, pushing down. And I go over it a few times. And you'll be able to feel when it finally cuts through that paper. So now I'm going to do the top. And a quick tip that I wanted to share is if you're worried uh, you can see my finger is holding down the ruler that holds down the cardstock to your table. One thing you could do is take some purple tape and tape your cardstock down to your craft mat. I didn't think of that till later, but that would really help if you're worried about your cardstock moving around. So now I have this cut into a really thin strip. So I just trimmed off the excess real quick and I'm going to just snip off the edges. I don't trust myself cutting. Well, with scissors to make it straight. So I'm just using a paper trimmer real quick. You could also use the cut line, but they were really skinny for me. So I'm just zapping these with my paper trimmer really quick. To finish putting my card together, I'm going to trim down my stencil background and add it to a piece of black onyx cardstock. And my card base is using ocean mist cardstock. Then I'm just lightly going over my ombre ink blended sentiment with a shimmer pen to add a little bit of sparkle. So that will complete this card today. Be sure to head over to my blog. Check out the blog hop that's going on right now if you're watching this currently. Lots of prizes to be won. I will have all of the supplies linked down below in the video description and on my blog as well. So here is a final look at my finished project. And I do have one more card to share with you using some products from... Pick a Fence Studios, My Sweet Petunia, and Gina K Designs. So I will have more explanation of that card over on my blog. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll see you next time.